Howdy party people, Silly here coming at you with 200 tips for Escape from Tarkov. I'm going to try to throw as much information at you as I can without wasting too much of your time, so shortly we're going to jump right into the tips. If you have any questions or tips of your own, feel free to throw them in the comment section down below or jump over to my Twitch stream where I stream Tarkov during the week and I can answer anything you may have for me there. Enjoy the tips. Alt left click will quickly add gear to your PMC. This can save you time when looting or gearing up in the stash. You can rotate items with the R key while you are holding onto them with your mouse. You can split an ammo stack by holding control and click and dragging the existing ammo stack to a new inventory slot. You can then select how much ammo you want to split. You can drag items down to the keybind hotbar to bind them instead of using the number keys if you prefer to do that this way. The binaural audio checkbox in the sound tab should be enabled to get the best directional audio. Currently there are major bugs with this option, but in the ideal future this should be turned on. A goal for every raid is ideal. Knowing what you are going in for and having your route planned will clear up any confusion that could get you killed. Operational tasks are daily challenges with one weekly challenge. These quests can give some nice rewards, so keep an eye on them. The money and XP will also improve as you level up in the game. Ragman can sell you some alternative outfits in the service tab. Stalkov is overpowered, and the better looking PMC usually wins the gunfights. <laughs> if you're new here, that is sarcasm, but the clothes are sick. You can fast level traders by buying items and selling it back to them. Both counts for money spent. Traders have a global stock and the timer under them indicates when that trader will reset its stock. This can be very useful to know as some valuable ammos are bought immediately after reset. A faster way to refresh the flea market is to double tap the tab key to exit and then re-enter the flea market. This is faster than waiting for F5 to refresh the page. Offline mode can be a great way to learn sniper distance. Once you are familiar with bullet drop and travel speed, you'll save a lot of time when engaging at PvP and long ranges. The lightest rig in the game while maintaining a good capacity is the Thunderbolt rig. Use this rig if you want to keep your weight down. Dog tag value increases with the level of the dog tag. Every level increases the value by 360 rubles, meaning high level players can fetch quite the bounty. Pressing down the mouse wheel will fold the stocks on guns. This is useful for saving space in the stash or in your backpack while you're in a raid. Pressing the mouse wheel on an item will examine it if you haven't examined the item yet. Nighttime raids have a lot less players. This can be useful if you are strictly looting or you're looking to get some quests done as there are a lot less people who could possibly kill you. Look at the quest item list on the Tarkov wiki so you can start looking for these items ahead of time. This will save you a lot of time when doing your quests. Use offline mode to learn the layout of all the maps. This will greatly improve your survivability. Learning where other PMCs spawn will help you greatly at the start of the raid. Players who know the spawns will have a massive advantage in early fights. Learn where the extracts of maps are and where players can camp these from. It's a good habit to check these places as you are extracting. Take money for the car extracts. They can save you a lot of time and they also provide you with scab karma after a successful extract. The close storm spawn on customs is one of the best. You can either quickly loot the place or set up for players that are inevitably coming in your direction. The water in the swamp area of shoreline slows you down extremely. Avoid it if you can. However, there are some hidden stashes and a lot of good underrated loot amongst the rundown buildings. On interchange, certain lights and loud alarms like the tech light alarm will be off if the power hasn't turned on. Knowing these cues can provide you information on what other players are doing in the map as some doors are only openable once the power is on. On your favorite maps, learn what audio cues you can from big PvP areas. This will give you a massive advantage as you'll be able to tell where other players are from their sounds. Turn your game sound up and use compression if you can. This will allow you to hear people without damaging your ears. As someone with tinnitus, please protect your ears. If you can, keep a mental image of the map. When you hear gunshots and grenades, you can keep track of what's going on around you and adjust accordingly. Over time, you'll learn what different guns sound like. You can use this information to track specific groups of players. You can click the middle mouse button on a magazine to get an estimate on how full the mag is in your inventory if the number is unclear. Some weapons like the Mosin, M700, and SKS can be top loaded which means you can save space on magazines and load rounds directly from your rig or your pockets. 
When you unlock the flea market, you can use it to identify most items in the game. This will help you when you build weapons in the preset menu as you can only select parts you have identified. You can tag magazines with right click to identify which ones are full of AP and which ones are full of flesh rounds. You can also use this to send post-mortem messages to people who are looting you, if you want to be a memer. You can set a single key weapon jam keybind by going into your keybind settings and setting the same key to press and then in another slot setting the same key to release. For example, I use L on press to inspect my weapon and then L on release to fix the jam. So I hold L, which triggers the press, I inspect the weapon, and when my weapon is inspected and I know the jam, I release L and my PMC fixes it. I set discard to control right click so I can quickly pick up items with control left click and toss items away with control right click as the delete key is a bit out of the way. Set important keybinds to your mouse if you have them. I personally have quick reload and change scope magnification on my mouse buttons. This gives me easy access to them while in fights. You can change your PMC's voice at any time by going into the sound tab in the options menu. You can test what your PMC sounds like in the control menu in the phrases tab. If you are trying to pack light, don't bring a melee slot item. Some melee items weigh significant amount so not bringing them can save you some weight. Base covers are very valuable. Without them, your head will stick out like a glowing beacon waiting for everybody to shoot at it. Offline mode is great PvP practice. Heading to factory with the scavs turned up high or fighting your friends can help you get comfortable with the shooting mechanics in the game. Don't let gear fear get in the way of your raids. Gear is only temporary and getting into wild fights with good gear can be a lot of fun. I have a quick video on this topic if you'd like to know more. Link in the description. Learn from your deaths. If you have recording software, watching your deaths back to see what went wrong is extremely helpful when it comes to improving at the game. Sometimes you only notice information you missed the second time around. Watching other players on YouTube or Twitch can help you learn how other people play as every person has a different playstyle. There's always knowledge to be learned or not learned through other people. I have a Twitch channel where I stream during the week if you ever want to stop by, I'd love to have you there. Tarkov is very CPU heavy, so sometimes if you have a great GPU, you can increase your FPS by turning up the graphics to add more load to the GPU and less on the CPU. You can turn shadow visibility down in the graphic settings so you can see better in dark areas. You can use post effects settings to make visibility easier in certain areas or simply make your game better looking. I like color so I add saturation to my raids, but also I can see way better in the dark. WASD moves the camera in the hideout. Useful for quickly crafting multiple items at different stations. Any item you craft in the hideout will count as fine in raid. This can be extremely helpful for quests. The hideout is worth investing into. Special ammo and gear crafts along with quest items can be made to hasten your character's progression. The workshop level 1 upgrade from the hideout will enable you to access weapon presets and advanced modding. This is key to modding weapons in Tarkov. You can favorite crafts in the hideout by clicking the heart shaped button to the left of the craft. This will keep those crafts at the top of the list. Tools with a small wrench icon will not be consumed when you craft. They will be delivered back to you after the craft is complete. You can test face shields in the hideout to understand where the crack is in the visor. From there, you can decide if you still want to use it. If you don't have the EOD edition or the Edge of Darkness edition of Tarkov, it is very important to upgrade your stash in the hideout. You can reduce the ambient noise of the hideout by adjusting the hideout volume in the sound options menu. Different meds have different healing speeds and can heal different injuries. Double click a medical item to see exactly what it does. Use heavy and light bleed bandages to stop bleeds as stopping them with med kits like the AFAC will drain a significant amount of use from it. Use a surgery kit to fix blacked out limbs. The Surf 12 kit can also mend fractures. The CMS kit works faster, however the Surf kit is more efficient at healing a black limb, meaning that you'll heal more back at the cost of a longer use time with the Surf 12. But sometimes, speed is key. If your head or thorax gets blacked out, you die. Currently, there's a bug where if you take bleed damage, you can zero these limbs without dying. However. The second you take even one damage, you die afterwards. So in most cases, the second your head or thorax gets blacked out, you do die. Painkillers have different durations and penalties to hydration and or energy. 
Be careful you don't overuse these and dehydrate or starve yourself. Blacked out arms will make aiming much more difficult. Painkillers can help with this, but you'll have to use a surgery kit to fix the issue. Blacked out legs will make sprinting and jumping difficult. You can still sprint and jump on painkillers, but you'll take damage when using your legs for movement. Use a surgery kit when you can to avoid taking damage. If you get hit in a blacked limb, the damage will spread to other parts of your body that still have health. High flesh rounds will rip you apart and this is why it's so important to do surgery when you can. You can set a single key bleed keybind by going into your keybind settings and setting the same key to press and then in another slot setting the same key to release. For example, in slot 4 I have the 4 key on press for my heavy bleed bandage and in slot 5 I have 4 set on release for my light bleed bandage. So whenever I have a bleed I press 4 and I'm good to go. Feel free to experiment with this and create your own keybinds. I recommend you set your health condition to always shown and your health color scheme to polychrome in the game settings, so you can always see your health status in raid. Propotol is a great way to heal yourself up after a fight without wasting your med kit to heal every limb. This will also allow you to loot and leave the area quicker as the healing is passive. The ETG stim will quickly bring you to full health if you're badly hurt during a gunfight. However, the stim is not cheap to use. Stack backpacks in your stash to save up on storage space. Remove pistol grips and magazines to condense gun sizes in the stash. When receiving back insurance items, if your PMC doesn't have gear on, you can alt click items directly from the insurance window. This will equip items directly to your PMC, which can be very useful if you have big things like armors that are coming back on insurance that you can't quite fit back into your stash. You can use link search on a weapon part to see everything that part is compatible with. Keep in mind you will only see items that you have inspected. Guns will expand downwards and to the right when adding parts to them. Keep this in mind when you are building a gun in your stash. You can right click on magazines in your stash and load them with ammo that way. You don't need to drag ammo to them like you would in raid. You can sell items in containers, you just have to right click and open the container when in a trader menu. This also works on the flea market. Page up and page down will quickly take you to the top or the bottom of your stash. Get used to control left clicking items into your inventory to save time when looting or managing your stash. Utilize the wish list. I keep all of my favorite gear or gear I buy often to the wish list to save time out of raids. Filtering items by condition in the flea market will help you avoid scams and ensure that every item you buy is in good condition. Selling items on the flea market will increase your flea market rep which will eventually grant you more slots to sell items. The green check mark inside a circle indicates that you have a quest available for that trader. A blue check mark indicates that you have completed a quest for that trader. You can link search magazines to see what ammo is compatible with them. The general sell order for items is Jaeger and Therapist, then Ragman for gear, and finally Mechanic for anything weapon related. Peacekeeper, however, will pay you the best price for intelligence related items such as diaries and flash drives. Fence pays the least for any item, however he will buy anything, even guns or armor that are too badly damaged. You can auto sort your stash by clicking the two blue arrows button on the bottom left of your stash panel. I personally use this a lot. You can also auto sort within containers. The button will appear across from the name of the container when you open it. Above the auto sort button is a sorting table, which is a window you can use to rearrange items in your stash. You can put as many items as you like on the sorting table, but you'll need to put them back in your stash when you're done with it. Use the stash filter buttons when gearing up. This can be very helpful when looking for specific items in your stash like the last few rounds of ammo you need to fill your magazines. You can tag cases in your stash so you know exactly what's in them. This will save you a ton of time gearing up or unloading gear after a successful raid. You can hit tab while you are out of raid at any time to open up your inventory. This is very useful when you are at your insurance screen and realize you forgot one item. Just press tab, you don't have to go all the way back. You can remove the handbook alerts by simply clicking on the green number box in the bottom right. In the tasks tab on the right side of your screen you'll see the quest inventory. This will show you what quest items you have on you and give you the option to store the quest items if you don't want to work on a quest in the moment. You can only store special items like secure folders here not stash items. You can sort your tasks by location by clicking on the word location in the task tab. This can help you group some quests together on your next raid. Going up and either food or water will increase your metabolism skill and when maxed out your character will ignore dehydration and starving effects. 
This is extremely helpful. Each skill has diminishing returns that softly resets after 5 minutes of not getting XP for that specific skill. You can earn around 3 or 4 points in a skill before realistically it doesn't move. Throwing grenades can level strength and your throwing grenade skill. You level endurance by sprinting underweight and level strength by sprinting overweight. Your health skill levels when you earn points in endurance, vitality, and strength. You level your covert movement skill when you move with your speed set to 25% or lower. You can easily level vitality and stress resistance by walking into barbed wire without painkillers. The armor repair skill, light and heavy, has added the ability to apply a bonus to armor that you repair with it, so long that you repair that armor with an armor repair kit. These buffs can be very good as one of the potential buffs you get is reduced damage. I highly recommend acquiring a weapon and armor repair kit as this will save you money but it's also the only way to level the armor and weapon repair skills as paying a trader will not do that. Pick up all the little items in raid and if you don't want them drop them right after. This will give you looting XP and increase your perception skill much faster. Any item you don't hand over from your player scav at the end of a raid will be deleted. Your scav comes with their own set of skills like your PMC does. Even though you get a random scav every time, you can still level things like endurance and strength for your scav character. When scaving, other AI scavs will be friendly to you if you have positive scav karma. You can use this to your advantage as they can defend you from PMCs or other bad scavs. If you shoot at another scav as a player scav, scavs in the surrounding area will be aggressive towards you. This won't happen however if you were shot first. Killing other scavs will reduce your scav karma by 0.1 if you shoot shot first, which is about equivalent to 10 scav raids, as each successful scav raid rewards you with 0.01 karma. When reaching over 6.0 scav karma, you will then be friendly to scav bosses. This is an insane bonus as oftentimes you will be rewarded with free PMC kits that the scav bosses has killed for you. Scavs can spawn in after a PMC has died up until the last PMC leaves a server. When looting the aftermath of a fight, look in hidden corners close to the fight area for people who try to insurance fraud items. Your scav loadout is free and completely random. Take advantage of this off cooldown if you need some more money. The higher your scav karma is, the better random loot you will spawn with. This can mean bigger bags and better starting items and gear. High scav karma will grant you more exit locations when scaving in. As your karma increases, you will eventually gain access to every extract, every raid. High scav karma will reduce your scav cooldown all the way to 5 minutes per scav. This essentially gives you a 100% uptime on your scav as you can spend 5 minutes unloading loot. You can use your scav to find task items that require the find in raid tag safely. You can turn the UI sounds down in your settings to make looting and inventory management silent. I find this very helpful when packing my mags as you can still listen for footsteps. Currently this is bugged and the audio is a little loud all the time, but this should be fixed soon. You can press alt when aiming down sights to hold your breath and stabilize your weapon. You can bind items to your quick bar by placing it in your rigor pockets and while your mouse is hovering the item, press a number from 4 to 9 or 0. Double tap R to do a quick reload. This is about a half second faster than a normal reload, but you will drop the spent mag while doing so. My next tip is to actually change the quick reload away from the double R key so your game doesn't delay your regular reloads as it will wait a set amount of time to check if you are double pressing R. I personally have quick reload on one of my mouse buttons. Recoil is much lower when prone or crouched. Even crouching makes a massive difference when you're spraying. Bushes and barbed wire will give your position away to nearby players as these are both very loud noises. Sprint through open areas but slow down in buildings and corners. If a player hears you first, they are likely waiting for you to turn the corner. Caps lock will immediately set your player speed to the slowest level. Useful for sneaking in a pinch. You can scroll with your mouse wheel to manually adjust your walking speed. If you hold down R and use the scroll wheel, you can manually select what magazine you want to load. Useful if you have different ammo and different magazines. If you hold down C or your crouch button and use your mouse wheel, you can manually adjust your height level from standing to crouch. Useful when shooting over cover of various heights. Always track the current time of your raid. You can predict other players' movements with this as eventually you'll know where people tend to be at what times. 
Double tap the O key to see what extracts you have. Q and E will enable you to lean around corners. You can also do this while prone. Alt, Q and E will make your character do a sidestep. This can be very useful against some of the harder AI like raiders or rogues. Alt, Q and E while prone will allow you to do a slight roll peek. It can also make you look dead if you are memeing. Keep moving. When you are moving, you are harder to hit and you'll end up dying less to one taps. This will give you a fighting chance to shoot back as bullets are flying in your direction. Keep moving as you are extracting, as extract campers can be watching you from that rock over there and you definitely don't want to be one tapped on the way out. Rain makes it harder to hear footsteps, so use this to your advantage when trying to flank other players. When in cover, feel free to pause for a moment to listen for any movement that could be around you but not immediately in your line of sight. Useful for entering buildings as well. You can crouch midair and do a crouch jump. This can be very useful when hopping through windows as doors are called fatal funnels for a reason. It's always good to have multiple options for leaving or entering a building. Headsets allow you to hear a lot farther and I always recommend you wear them unless you are wearing a helmet that isn't compatible with them. All the headsets allow you to hear exactly the same distance. You refill magazines by dragging an ammo stack onto a magazine that has space in your inventory. Guns can start jamming once their durability reaches 93% or lower. Checking your chamber is a useful way to see what your gun is loaded with. I use this hotkey a ton in raids. The last thing you want is to have a really bad round loaded into the chamber and then a mag full of AP. Use alt right click to adjust the zoom on your optics. I also have this bound to one of my mouse buttons. You can only reload ammo or magazines from your pocket or rig. Keep enough room for one magazine in your pockets or rig when you reload. If your rig and pockets are full, you will drop your spent magazine instead of storing it in your rig. Use a rangefinder in your special slots to measure distance. This can be very helpful when sniping. Your secure container, melee slot, and special slots cannot be looted by other players and you'll keep these items on death. Check your fire rate. You don't want to turn a corner inside and find your gun was on single fire. Look at the Tarkov ammo charts to get an understanding of how each round performs. Know when you can shoot through armor or when you have to go for limb shots. You can use page up and page down to adjust your zeroing distance when aiming down sights. However, I prefer to keep the default zero and just use scope dots for drop. Your nades do not do shrapnel damage. They rely solely on blast radius damage, meaning you won't die as long as you are far enough away from the grenade. Pick your battles. You don't always have to shoot at every player you see. Sometimes it's much more important to get out safely with those quest items. Use double tap V to make a quick melee attack. This is very helpful when you need to break windows to hop through. Scavs are a really good detection system. When scavs are shooting, they are either targeting PMCs or bad player scavs. Use this knowledge to track other players. Throwing grenades or shooting unsuppressed is a great way to bait in players looking for PvP. I have found this very helpful when sniping or doing quests where you have to get kills in certain areas. Reposition whenever possible. Peeking from the same angle is dangerous because there's a good chance your opponent is waiting and watching it. If you are up against a squad, then re-peeking will probably result in a fury of bullets heading at your last known location, so don't be there. Grenades usually cause AI to use voice lines or run around making loud movement. You can throw them to map their position and secure easy kills. Running into a wall can confuse players and make them think you are running away. This can be a great tactic to draw your enemies out or to simply cause them to make sound cues. If you use a med kit and immediately cancel it with left click, you can bait players into thinking you are healing. Players will push recklessly at healing sounds. Use this to your advantage. If you kill sniper scav and they fall, they can have very good ammo and scopes on their body. Constantly eat and drink items you find in raid to keep your hydration and energy up. A blacked out stomach will drain both of these stats very quickly and you will very quickly die when dehydrated and starving. Pressing F1 nice. will get your character to use a voice line. Pressing F1 in combat will result Lay in a more aggressive voice line. Grenades have different fuse times and throwing distances. I prefer to use VOGs for their short fuse times to give my enemies less time to react to my grenade toss. You can shoot out lights when raiding. This can be very useful during night raids when you have night vision. You can enable and disable night vision or visors with the N key. Useful if your visor obscures your vision or if it gets too bright for your night vision. Off angles or unexpected angles can give you free wins sometimes in fights. Standing on top of something or getting real low can throw your opponent off guard and buy you enough time to hit shots 
spots and eliminate your target. Learning what doors spawn open or closed on your favorite maps can help you track other players' movements. Being overweight will increase the noise you make and slow you way down. It is recommended to drop your bag if a fight is breaking out and you are overweight. Lasers will give you a recoil reduction effect when using point fire. Lasers are honestly OP at times and I highly recommend you use them. Flashlights can greatly blind your opponents in CQB which can lead to very easy kills. Sturman, the woods boss, uses an SVD without a silencer. Listen for this when on woods to determine if he spawned. Killa in most cases uses an RPK unsuppressed, but in the case he doesn't, long rapid fire gunshots and his unique voice lines are always ways to tell if he spawned or not. The Goons, a group of very difficult scab bosses, have preset spawn locations on every map. Learn these locations if you want to hunt them. Tagilla, the factory scab boss, can have tier 6 armor. The best way to kill him if you don't have AP ammo is the lags blast them to pieces. Shoot scav bosses or other high tier enemies like rogues or raiders in the head when possible. They can spawn with as much as three times the amount of health you do, so dealing head damage is the fastest way to kill them. Rashala, the customs boss, will have four armed guards with him, so you should know once you kill them all. Blue car, the reserve scav boss, can arrive with up to five or six armed guards. Keep that in mind while you are fighting him. Cultists can spawn anywhere between 2200 and 7. Be very careful when approaching them as they have a large aggro radius and oftentimes will delete you if you don't know they're there. Cultists spawn in amounts of 3 to 5. They also make zero footstep cues, so you always have to be on alert when fighting them close by. Jackets can spawn any keys in the game. I recommend my Shoreline Village run to find a large amount of keys. Link also in the description. Duffel bags can spawn any item in the game minus keys and armbands. Do not pass on these amazing loot containers. Hidden stashes can spawn any of the best items in the game. They are duffel bags but stronger because they can even spawn the rare armbands. I have stash guides on most maps if you need them. Learn where the good loot spawns. Knowing where the good loot is will lead to a massive amount of profits from raids. I have many loot guides to help you with this if you need. Press Z after you opened a container to go prone while looting. This can make you harder to spot and less of a target when you are searching containers. Learn the prices of items. Knowing what to drop and switch out as your bag is filling up will be helpful to pull the most money out of a single raid. Loot safes whenever you see them. They can spawn many valuable items. Look at what items are needed for your hideout, and even if you don't want to upgrade it, which I recommend against, you can always sell these items for good value on the flea market. Some food items are very valuable, especially the ones used for the holodilnic case barter. It may be better to save these items and sell them on the flea market instead. You can stack items onto rails in your bag or onto weapons you may find. This will save you inventory space and allow you to take more loot out with you. The documents bag can hold keys but also many other valuable items such as intel, GP coins, lab key cards, USBs, and more. This will allow you to secure much more valuable loot in your secure container. If you find a big rig in raid, you can grab it and then fill the rig with items to get more value per slot in your inventory. You can tap bodies by opening their inventory and immediately canceling with tab to get loot XP. The better the loot, the more XP you'll get from the body, so you can use this to quickly check how valuable a body is while also picking up a good amount of XP. Scav pockets and backpacks can spawn very good keys and important quest items, so don't necessarily write off every scav you kill. You can disassemble guns when looting other players if your weapon slots are full. This will allow you to take all the valuable parts like the suppressors and scopes, but also save you inventory space. Insurance fraud is a great way to make money. If you find another U-lock while you are already wearing one, throw yours in a hidden spot and wear the one you found. You'll eventually get the one you dropped back, meaning you just looted a free helmet without wasting space. Loot quickly after fights or move on. Fights draw a lot of attention and there's a solid chance players are heading your way. Removing mags from some guns like the MP7 or MP5 will make them smaller and easier to carry when finding one in raid. And finally, for the 200th tip, subscribe to the silly- Nah, just kidding, just kidding. It's have fun. Tarkov is a video game made for entertainment, so always play how you want to play. You won't enjoy the game if you follow what other people like to do.
Well, this just about wraps up our 200 tip video. I hope you learned at least one tip from this video, and I'd love for you to throw your own suggestions in the comments down below. A massive thank you again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.